Good morning to you and welcome again, wheresoever you may be, this Friday morning to our prayers. Today we celebrate Christ's presentation in the temple and the Jewish obligation for purification of mother and child, which would have occurred 40 days after Jesus' birth. And this day is also called Candlemas, because from the 5th century, people would take their candles to church where they would be blessed before they were used back at home. Today's appointed gospel reading comes from Luke's second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And this is the Gospel of Christ. Mary and Joseph must have been astounded at what was being said about their child. Even they had not yet had not yet come to fully realise just who Jesus was. And all is not sweetness and light. For as we heard, Simeon goes on to say some harsh sounding words. He said, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. To say that Jesus brings about the fall of people is a difficult idea to come to terms with. It seems to fly in the face of the loving, forgiving and compassionate Jesus of the Gospels. And yet the paradox is that many people, for reasons of their own, do totally reject the way of life that Jesus proposes. Jesus' life is a sign, a sign which points us in the direction of God. But there are too many who contradict that, that sign and go off in other directions. And Simeon has more to say. To Jesus' his mother, he also says, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Mary will not know the meaning of these words for many years to come although perhaps a small taste, foretaste will come when Jesus is lost as a boy in Jerusalem. We remember that no more than her son will she be spared from sharing some of the pain he will ultimately endure. It is all part of that unconditional yes which Mary made to the angel in Nazareth. And that also is contained in the offering of her son that she has just made to God his Father in the temple. Amen. And so let us pray. Almighty God, as our Lord Jesus Christ was brought into the temple, 
we ask for your blessing upon the church throughout this world. May we share in the mission of Christ and show that his, show that his light is for all peoples and all nations. We pray for your faithful people that they may be lights in the world. And we pray for the time when the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for your blessing upon Charles our King and upon all leaders and rulers of nations. Give them wisdom and humility to work for peace and stability in your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of steadfast love, trusting you, we devote our hearts to learning and our lives to walking in the footsteps and faith of Christ. Teach us truth that may, we may walk with courage. Teach us mercy that we may walk with humility. Teach us forgiveness that we may walk with compassion. Teach us grace that we may walk with strength. Teach us wonder that we may walk with praise. Teach us goodness that we may walk with those in need. O God of steadfast love, be with us on our journey. Amen. And now let us pray for all those who are sick in mind, body or spirit. We pray for God's grace upon them and we pray for all who care for them at home, in hospital or in our nursing homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, who have gone before us to God's eternal kingdom. And this week I ask you to pray for Graham Bright. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray for all those who mourn. And I ask you to remember Graham's widow, Valerie, and his son, Rupert. May they be comforted by our dear Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so now please join in with me using the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so as we close for today, let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and for evermore. Amen. And so, farewell for today, and why not join Mark on Monday when he leads our prayers, and you will find all our other recorded services and music in the same place as these prayers. Farewell. <laughs>